Hello, welcome to Crafting with Jane. Um, today we're going to make a Christmas card and we're going to make it with this lovely stamp set from Creative Expressions. Um, it is called, what's it called? Oh, it's called Winter Fox. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful image. So I thought that we would, um, I've masked off my paper. You can use whatever size paper you want. You know, sometimes I use square, sometimes I use big, sometimes I use, this is just happens to be a, um, a, a five and a half by three and three quarters, I think. Um, but you can use it whatever size you want. I'm just doing a mask off because we're going to be doing some coloring and I've just mounted the hair, um, the fox. You can see what a lovely image it is. So I'm going to do it in Versafine Claire Morning Mist because I don't want it too dark because we're going to be colouring it. So I'm literally just inking up really well. If you ink it up in different directions, particularly when it's very detailed like this, as you can see, you've got lots of fur and feathers and things like that on here, detailed in the stamp. So I find that if you ink it up in different directions, you tend to get a better image. Now, I'm just going to put, excuse my head if it comes in, because I want this to come in on the centre, and it's going to come in like that. So I'm just going to... Give it a good old press. Leave it just for a second to sort of soak in because, as I say, it's a it's a very detailed stamp. Um, very beautiful stamp, actually. And um, I've I've done one, so I know that it comes out really, really well. So let's just take that off. I mean, look at that. Look at the detail in that. I think that that's just absolutely stunning. So we're uh, really, really pleased with this one. This is one from my Farnborough... Um, my Farnborough, the, the Farnborough Creative Creative Craft Show. Um, it's a large craft show which is done, I think, annually at the moment. It might be twice a year. Um, with COVID, there were there were all sorts of restrictions and things, but I think we're getting back to um, it being twice a year. Um, but it has over a hundred different um, companies um, that will display and show off their various different wares and things which is quite nice so I'm just going to pop this one back in here um, and I'm, I'm doing that just it gives it a second for it to dry because I don't want it to be wet when we start doing some colouring so I'm just putting that back now I've got little sort of snowflakes and things in there which we can use um, don't know whether I am. I've got this Peace and Love, which I really like. So I'm going to put that in there. But again, I think I'll probably do that at the end. And I've got these, which I think I'm going to do as sort of part of the background. So um, what I've got is I have got a circular... I was going to say circular miles. I've got a cutout that I've actually done from the fox. And you can see I've done it quite close so that when I sponge round, you don't get a white shadow. So I'm going to use that and I want to use some um, neutral colours. So I'm going to use a very pale sort of beige colour, which I really like. So this is Sahara Sand. Um, you can use whatever you want. If you've got these oxides and things like that, use that. As you know, I use what I have and I have got quite a lot of stamping up ones. So basically, I'm going to take it from the corner and just bring it down. And I'm using a um, blending brush because, again, I don't want it to be too dark in there but I do want the whole of the image to be covered. So I'm just holding it down. You can use some low tack if you want to. Um, I find it as easy to just um, hold it down in place. You can then move it a little bit closer or a little bit apart. The good thing about having it masked down is that you can take it from the edge and you're still going to have a really nice 
smooth um, boarded edge on there. So as I say, I'm just taking it all the way round because I really love this, this colour because it's not too dark and I don't want it to be to come out too dark. So let me just, sorry, my hand's probably in the way. Take it up from this corner. And as I say, you can build it up quite a bit as you go. I'm not overly fussed because I don't want it to be too dark in on here. Okay, so that's that. If I take that off, you can see you've still got the whole of the image. So it is worth doing a little mask because then we can do the colouring afterwards. And I'm only doing that so that the ink dries really, really well. Okay, now what I want to do is I've got this lovely sort of um, little spriggy pine coney type thing, which I think will give, because again, it looks quite fine. I haven't used this one but I think that this will work in on the background. So what I want to do with this is take it onto a slightly smaller block. That'll do, I think. And then I'm just going to ink it up in the same color because I want it to be fairly sort of neutral. And I'm just going to stamp it just sort of quite randomly. just in and about all the way around and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it at different angles because what I want to do is to cover up the whole of the background so we can have some that will go in over the top of each other um, we can have them going separate We can have them just what I don't want to do is to have that sort of stalk part coming out. So I'm trying to take it so that we have some of this, but that's where the actual fox is. Um, you have to excuse it. I have. Um, let me just turn that phone off. Give me two seconds. Unfortunately, I do have too many um, sales calls and things coming through, which is a bit frustrating. But unfortunately, if you are doing things in the media, as in YouTube and things like that, you do get um, your details and things out there. And unfortunately, I would only give my mobile phone number out when I have to and uh, that unfortunately means that I get lots of sales calls but you know that's part of the thing I don't ever answer them so I literally just turn my phone off because you can always tell um, on phones these days who's calling you so I know exactly if it's something I need to answer or if it's something not okay I'm just putting this down on here and I'm just taking one out like that. Okay, so that's given that a bit of a background. In fact, that hasn't come out on there, has it? Let's see, I just want to get it up in. You see on here? That's better. I'll just have a little bit down on there that just hasn't come out. Perfect. Okay, so I think that that's gonna work lovely like that. Now I just want to take a little bit of, <coughs> excuse me, um, a little bit of a green and again just to bring in a slightly different colour tone on here. As I say, I want it to be, it's going to end up being a bit sort of snowy. So I'm just, I don't want this too dark, but I'm just taking just a little bit of the green in and you can see I'm not um, 
I'm not overly doing it. I'm just sort of doing it in a few areas so that it just blends it in a little bit like that, but it's not too much. Okay, so that is our fox done on here. Now we need to do some colouring. Now what I've done is I have got my um, ink tense pencils because they work really really well. I've done as you know I do a swatch for them all so I have taken um, willow, mustard, sun yellow, baked earth and bark. So we got from very light to very dark. So I'm going to start with, and I might not use all of them, as I say, I quite often get quite a few out and then decide. I'm going to use the mustard to start off with. And I'm literally just, let me bring you in for the colouring, because I know that quite a lot of you enjoy doing the colouring. So I'm just going to bring you in. And let me see if I can, sorry if it's woggling a little bit, but it will steady itself that hopefully will bring you near enough so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edge of my brush or edge of my pencil rather I'm just going to take the colours up like this and I want to have this that it's coming down. This is all going to be, or most of it is going to be light or white in on here. So I don't want all of it to be white, but down on this bit. So down into here, down from there is going to be white. So I just want to bring this in. And as I say, I'm doing it on the side bringing it round in on here and I'm just taking a little bit at a time so I'm just brushing this is quite bright we want white on the edge of the tail okay so that's the pale one so that was the um, baked baked earth now I wanted to do the mustard and the mustard is going to come in on here because that sort of yellow and I just want a little bit maybe in the ears bring that down here a little bit and by blending several colors in together when you then do your water brush now on here you can see this is sort of the where his leg comes so although I'm doing this all in pale to start off with I'm going to take some dark in on this area so we then see where the um, the lines are going to come. So that's that one. This one is, let me have a look at this, this is Willow. Now Willow is a darker brown so I can do on here, just take a little bit of dark up on here which is where the tail is coming in on here. And then I'm going to take some dark just round on the underneath of where his leg is going to be. So this part of his leg coming in here, just a little bit on that part. And then I can do just on the back of here will come darker. Then we've got the very dark, which is bark. And so again, I'm just going to add a little bit on here, a little bit round on there, which is darker, a little bit up on here to separate it off and a little bit down on this bit here. And then his little muzzle is going to be in the willow, I think which is the darker brown. Is that willow? That's mustard. That is willow. 
So that's going to be his little nose and muzzle on here. That's going to be quite dark. Okay, so we can start with that. And then all I'm going to take it, do is to take my water brush and I've got one which I doesn't um, take too much water off, which is what I want. I don't want it to be too saturated. So I'm just going to start on here and just bring in some of this colour to make sure it's not too wet. So I'm just bringing in the colour on here and if you as you're doing it just sort of blend it through you will then get the different colours just blending through. And I'm just taking it through on here where we've got the dark. Now this might be a little bit light and I might have to go and do it again because it's a matter of building up those colours so some of it you'll have quite a lot of you can see the dark shading on there um, you'll have quite a lot of colour coming through other parts you don't have quite so much so with this I'm literally just bringing it up and the good thing with the ink tenses is, let's do this little muzzle in on here, is that you can, um, if you just wait a little bit, once it's dried, you can then go over it and do it again. Now, I want to take, there is a white, which although the paper is white, I just want to go over on here. And take white for here. Take white from there. So we can colour that in. So that takes it quite nice and white. And then I want to take in the darker colours. So the willow. Let me find the willow in on here. I want to take in more of this willow. So you can just start building it up you can see on here that as I'm going over it it's darkening quite nicely but you still have the other colors underneath and that's where doing it with pencils you can build and build and build if you do alcohol markers you can only really get a couple of tones before everything is overly saturated and being overly saturated you then can't really do much with it um, again if you used watercolor paper you would get more definition in on here I'm only using um, just standard cardstock it's reasonably heavyweight I think it's about 300 GSM um, but again it's not it's not overly saturated. Um, you know, I've kept the brush fairly dry. That's why I said you don't want a, a brush that is really wet. But now that, you see, has given it much more depth of colour in on there. And again, I can take the water brush if I want to. And just add some colour in on here. I'm going to do the white just in on here to just sort of blend it through a bit. So that's the white which is quite good and the bit on the tail. And then even though there's white on here I'm just going to put a little bit up on the top. So that gives a little bit of light. And as I say with this I can now just blend those colours through again and you've got all of the colours underneath that are still showing so it makes the fox look more realistic um, and as I've always said you know I'm no expert I've I just practice 
and I think the more you practice the more you enjoy doing it but you know if you want a professional video then go and find a, a professional one mine is is literally just the way I like to do things okay so that's my fox I'm going to bring that out now so hopefully it's not going to be too there we go but you can now see the definition a little bit better I think and hopefully that will um that will work fine now I want to put some I want the peace and love for Christmas and I'm just going to put some little stars in there as well so let's pop this one in I wanted to do this last because I just think that that looks quite nice so we'll pop this one on here and I'm going to do it in the same grey I think because I don't want to do it in anything too dark and I know that it's not going to have um, it's going to have some of the other branches and things coming through at the moment but I don't think that that's going to make a huge amount of difference. I think that that will work quite well. Um, my fox isn't really, is sort of a bit up in the air. But I think if we have the, we've got the words, haven't we? Peace and love. Now, I think I'm going to do those and cut them out, I think. So let's take those out. And we'll put those in on just a little piece of white. I think I've probably got some scrap pieces over. No, I've used that one. I was just pulling a little scrap out from underneath my paper and stuff. Um, that'll do. That's a reasonable little scrap. Again, I'm doing it in the same colour tone. So the Versifying Claire and it's the... Um, grey which is what is it morning mist which is just a nice sort of grey colour so I'm just going to put this in on here like that and then just take some scissors here we go and I'm just going to cut those out it's a nice little heart bit on the bottom of there but I don't want them both at the same I want them to come down one one side one the or along the bottom so I'm not going to have just take that off like that and we can have this we need to take a little bit off of there so we'll have peace the end which is quite small we'll have the end in here and then we'll have the love down in on here we might have to jiggle it a little bit but those are my words that are going to go down in on the bottom okay so um, the moon I can do with, um, and I'm going to take the paper off first, but I'm going to do the moon with um, some Posca, I think, because then I can blend that in a bit. Now I'm just going to take this, which always, by the time you've done a bit, it sticks down a little bit more than you want, but, oh, well, that didn't work very well, did it? I'm still waiting for people to, um, and I expect because I haven't put the video up with that, I do videos and then put them up. Um, but anybody got any suggestions for some really good low tack tape? Because I do struggle with this low tack tape. It is ridiculous. Um, right, let's do it from here. It's always one of those things that I detack it all the time and it doesn't matter how much I detack. 
how much I detack it, it always seems to. And some people have said do it with a heat gun. I find that's even worse. Right, I'm going to take it off this way and hopefully we're all right on that. We've got a little bit that's gone on there, but for the purposes of the video, I think it'll be fine. Um, let's take this one up as well. As I say, I've spent a lot of time trying to detack it, but it's not um, its not the easiest. It really isn't. It sticks and sticks. And this, as I say, this is low tack. I actually bought three packets of this as low tack. And... Um, it's about as low tack as, as I don't know what. It's it's very frustrating. Let's try and take this one off. See, it's, it's just tearing it. I really, really don't like this at all. Oh, how frustrating. Let's take that off like that. I've got a bit of a tear on that. Hopefully, there won't be quite as much on here because this, as I say, I just... I spend about 10 minutes detacking it on skin and and jeans and goodness knows what else and it still manages to stick to everything but that's me whinging and moaning so ignore all of that and once it comes out um, it does look it does look pretty good so hopefully this one is going to come off and not going to there we go so I've just got a little tiny bit at the top, but I think that that's going to be all right. Um, take the rest of that out of the way. Right. That's, um, that's on like that. Now I just need another piece of something to just go underneath so it's not going to... Um, my light's not going to reflect up. So apologies for all this dithering away, but... Um, Unfortunately, sometimes the tools you buy are not what you think they are. Right, that I think is lovely. I want to do this moon and I'm going to do it, as I said, with a... Um, Posca um, pen. Because the Posca pens work really, really well and I can blend them in as well. Because I want it to be a moon. So I'm just going to take my white Posca... And then I can just take that in. I make, need to make sure that I've got my brush with me, which was the one that I was using, this one, I think. So I just need to make sure that I'm, once I start colouring it in, what I don't want is for it to be, there we go. take all the definition out so you can water it down you can use any form of um, white that you've got these just happen to be very good but they do they will take some of the definition lines out if you um, allow them to be too um, what do you call it too dark um, or too light in this case because they they're designed to be what they call it opaque on there so let's just take that through and that's given just a nice white part now we can make it a little bit whiter if we want just sort of on the edges coming through and I'm just doing a little sort of flicky lines on this so that it's not doesn't take up where the draw drawn lines are okay so that's taken that on now I want to make it sort of snow like so what I'm going to do as well is down on here on the branches I'm just going to bring some little lines to just follow in so right the way across just bring that in like this it 
just gives it a little bit more definition. But again, quite sort of randomly, you're not overly dressing it, just doing some little fine lines in where the little sprigs were. You just need to make sure that you don't put your hand over the top of it until it's dried. Like that. Okay, so that's given it more of a wintry feel. You see it's sort of starting to look a bit more wintry. Um, I want to do some, um, some splats and but i'm going to make them more i find that i'm not very good at actually getting what i call splats on there so i tend to just take a big the big one and just do random little dots so it looks as if there's snow falling now you'll notice i haven't put my sentiment down at the bottom yet but i'm going to do that at the end once i've got all of the decoration in there so those are the bigger ones and then because I've got the smaller pen I'm just going to do little white ones coming through like this so then it gives different looks of snow from large to small little bits as well. Um, the only thing I want to do is to just colour those little tiny stars in. Now, I'm just going to use a watercolour brush in here and I'm just going to do it in a yellow. So we've got just that for the little yellow stars because they're very small and there's only two of them that need any colour in so I'm literally just adding just a little bit of colour in on there like that. Okay so I need to just put these words in on here so we've got this we've got peace and we've got love in on here haven't we I want to try and take that just a little bit narrower because it is quite a small area Okay, so that's going to be where the piece is going to go. And then we've got, what have I just done with that and? There it is. So again, that's quite small. Just need to cut it down so that it's as small as we can get. So I'll put the and there. And I'm just going to take the love. I think that probably will be okay. So put that in on there just just it's quite it's quite tight but I think it'll be okay I might just sort of do it one up one down on there then I'm going to put um so let's try and stick this on first um what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of um I'm going to put I'll show you just this part and then I will finish it off afterwards because what are we on now? We're on about half an hour. So I'm using gold for this because I think gold looks nice for Christmas. This is the gold Posca pen. And I've got gold, silver and um, black and white in this set. And if you then just take it down like this. It just gives a nice gold border. You can mount it, obviously, with gold cardstock if you've got some gold cardstock. Um, you can use any form of gold to go around the edge. I just think for Christmas, it just finishes it off quite nicely. And um, it makes it look very pretty. So if we take this off like that. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, peace and love and I'm going to draw around that in gold as well and then I will mount it onto just a piece of white cardstock. So you'll see that on the finished thing. I'm not going to do that now because you don't necessarily need to see that. But I hope you can see how you can turn a pretty card into a Christmas card. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. As always, please stay safe and well. Please be kind. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye.